Happy New Year and welcome to 2020. I hope you had a very fruitful, enjoyable, festive season. This is Lama Vegetables, uh, Lentes in Jalo. My name is Zenzel and David and welcome to Asake Online. This is the Breakfast Club. As usual, we start the year on a high note, talking to different people, uh, sharing their experiences and different perspectives. Today in our program, we are talking to Kelvin uh, Malunga, who just completed his seven-year term as the Deputy Public Protector uh, in South Africa. This is quite a very powerful position where they were dealing with issues of accountability accountability, corruption, and basically making sure that the government and its various departments and officials account and are accountable and actually take it to task over the decisions and the, uh, the, that they make and actually making sure that the public gets the service that they're asking for. So in the program today, we're talking to him, sharing his experience as a public protector in South Africa, uh, talking to us about how he sees issues in Zimbabwe and about his future. I hope this program will not only be inspirational, but also very educative and you get something out of it. The public protector, uh, certainly where I was working, is, a, is an accountability mechanism that is found in the Constitution, uh, where in terms of the law, anybody who, has, who is aggrieved by the state, uh, who has a complaint against the state in terms of an action or an omission by the state that results in prejudice to them, uh, that that person can proceed, against, you know, they can, can complain uh, against. In other words, it's, it's, a, it's a way of protecting citizens. But it has a dual mandate in the sense that it is uh, also an anti-corruption commission or directorate. Yeah, so, so it, it performs two roles in the sense that there are two types of uh, investigations there. Uh, investigations of service failure or service delivery uh, complaints, right? And then on the other hand, there are conduct failure issues, which are bit, better known as corruption. But the common thread between all those things is the issue of maladministration. In other words, it's a, it's a mechanism that is put down by law that citizens can challenge formally at any time maladministration by any level of the state right so whether you're talking about the president you're talking about provincial uh, uh, premiers in that in that case in zimbabwe it would be your, your you know your governors and so forth uh, provincial ministers sorry they're no longer called governors these days uh, you know your 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 your, your parastatals uh, your mayors everyone who is in the employee of the state can be, uh, you know, challenged. You can complain against them. It can also be done on an own initiative. Furthermore, there is also an executive members ethics act, uh, which actually put a, which actually created an, an, a, creates an executive ethics code, which which manages or monitors conflict of interest and how. Uh, people who are members of the executive, uh, how they manage uh, their ethics. In other words, that they do not steal money, that they do not do things that are irregular over and above what is allowed to them in law, in, by the law. In other words, they can't uh, earn extra money over and above what their official salaries are, for example. Uh, so that's, it's, it's, it's basically an accountability mechanism. So, like an ordinary South African, how mm. do they access you? And let's say they, they go to a public hospital, they are mistreated. What's the process of them lodging in a, in a, a complaint with you? Yes, it's good you're raising the issue of the public hospitals uh, and so forth. So, basically, it's a walk-in walk -in approach. Uh, and, of course, with technology, things have improved. There's now, they were now using uh, Twitter, Facebook, uh, email. Uh, but, but generally, it's always been a walk-in type uh, system where someone walks into a provincial office and, and is able to, uh, you know, just to, to say, this is the problem. I, 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 I'm not able to get medicine or I applied for a, a, an ID and the ID is, is late or we're having to line 
up for hours on end without assistance, or there is nepotism by that city manager or town clerk. Uh, and, 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 and that's it's a basically, basically, as I said, it's a, it's, it's, it's a accountability mechanism where, where people can complain against the state. But how easy is it uh, to mm. solve you know, problems for individuals, for example? I can understand that probably mm. it's easier to deal mm. with uh, mm. state cases, corruption involving a government minister. But let's say uh, someone says my ID has not uh, mm. been out for two months. Mm. How easy is it to deal with all these cases with so many people complaining? It's, it's not easy, Debele, uh, but I can confirm that throughout my term of office, the bulk of the work 95%, even when I was working with Avogadro Madonsela, the bulk, 95% of our work was those type of issues. Because that's where the, the, the core face of service delivery is, where people, uh, you know, feel the brunt of state uh, inactivity. For example, when you they say you don't have water for six months. Eh? Uh, so it, it's really also about political will. Uh, and, and, and it has helped that certainly in that country that the highest court in the land has affirmed the powers of the institution and say, said, you cannot ignore this. So, you know, the, the head of this municipality, a minister so and so knows that if they, they ignore this, they're in contempt. So I think the, 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 the point that has to be made is that it has now embedded in the constitutional architecture and culture and habits of the country that people know that, hey, you know, these people are coming, public protector is coming. I could, I could sign uh, subpoenas and, and, and call people at all levels. In other words, I could summon, the, the, <laughs> for lack of a better word, the president, vice president, the ministers or whatever. You could summon, you could summon them in terms of the law. Uh, that, that is, the law allows you. And then... If, 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 if the person, and we used to call them Gogo Lamini, if Gogo, that Gogo who, who, who has a problem, her pension is late or whatever, is unpaid or, or she's been ill-treated by the state in one way or the other, if she is able to say, uh, I have been ignored, you can then follow up and say, hey, you know, Gogo uh, Ndebele or Uba Butube, whoever, has not been assisted. What is going on here? And of course, uh, many of them had, uh, uh, if I can put it this way, uh, you were, we were now preaching to the converted because they now understood what needs to be done. So the culture of accountability is one of the uh, sort of, I could say, minor success stories because if you speak to people who are living inside there, they will say it's not enough. There are people who are resisting and so forth. But it's one of the good things that is happening in, 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 that, in that jurisdiction in the sense that the, the architecture is there uh, and, and they were able to kill the idea of the big man syndrome. What we call chef here in Zimbabwe, you know? <laughs> you know? Chef was, 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 was killed quite a, a long time ago uh, in the sense that people, even those people who are at the top, can still be held to account. And they can still be cut down to size, if I can put it that way. Which is something that I think uh, uh, we probably have not seen in this country uh, over many years. In fact, I would say in, uh, many of the problems that we have are as a result of people just doing what they like. You're talking about accountability. Mm. You, are, you are in South Africa working for this powerful office mm. that is really summoning people to account. Mm. Looking back in Zimbabwe, you're saying there are all these things that can be uh, going well. What are the parallels that you can draw from the process and what is happening here, especially on the issues of accountability? In this case, parallels are, are the sense that there is a huge difference, uh, you know, uh, moving f uh, far apart in the sense that Zimbabwe. The Zimbabwe that I grew up in, that I was born in, uh, is, was very prosperous, you know, was a very organized place. You know, you had municipal clinics where children would go and get their immunizations and uh, people didn't have to pay all these exorbitant monies that are now being decreed. Um, uh, schools, children, as you alluded to earlier on, would get exercise books and, and, and everything worked. The roads, uh, so, 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 and, 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 and if some, it was very rare, uh, not 
unknown for people to have serious problems with public services. And then we had a culture of this big man syndrome. You know, the former president, and I don't want to only blame him, but he was unchallenged. You know, no one dared question him. You either, you know, you question him, you, you, you suffer the consequence of either, you know, violence or, or even death. So, 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 whereas that system currently, as I know it, people are quite robust. They are able to challenge the state. Someone can tell the president, for lack of a better word, that he's lying. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, without any fear of uh, 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 recrimination or, or, or victimization and so forth. And of course, whistleblowers have been treated somewhat better. And look, as I said, when I speak to people on the ground in, in the space that I work during my term, Many people are also unhappy there. But the reality is that there are a lot of uh, positive spin-offs from the fact that the system has been tested. Uh, one of the, 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 the legacies of, of President Jacob Zuma's uh, term of office is, is that he, his term pushed all these institutions to their limit. In other words, you know, the judiciary, uh, the public protector and so forth. So, and the rule of law was put to a test to say, you know, this, this, how far can this thing go? And, and, and when, when someone is unhappy about the, the conduct of whether it's any, any, anybody in the executive, whether it's the head of state or, 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 or someone like that, what, what, what do you do? And, and so Zimbabwe has done very badly in that regard um, because I have watched it decline. I'm always here. This is my home, home country. I have the citizenship of uh, uh, Zimbabwe and South Africa. It's my birthright. And, and, and um, it's something that is very disappointing in the sense that um, uh, you find that things collapse. Uh, and as things were collapsing, no one was able to be held to account for that. Um, in fact, as I like to say, uh, when people were being driven over the cliff, they were actually cheering, <laughs> you know? So now you have uh, a lot of things that have gone terribly wrong. You, uh, you know, you have uh, a decaying infrastructure, roads, potholes everywhere. You have, uh, um, uh, you know, the schools that were left to us, which uh, were in very great shape, you know, you find that they are falling apart, uh, they are, uh, grass is overgrown and, 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 you know, supplies, textbooks shortages and so forth. And all that is, is, is about, uh, you know, state activity, that state, state activity needs to be able to, to give you for, for, for the economy to prosper, you need a strong and efficient state. So, for example, I'll give you things that fell apart. National Railways of Zimbabwe, parastatal, right? Around 97, it also falls apart. Post and Telecommunications Corporation, PTC, uh, you've got... Uh, so, you know, you need a good transport system. For economy to 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 to, to flourish, you need good communications. You need uh, energy, zesa, right? Those are all state entities. Uh, now, all these factories that closed down in this beautiful city of Bulawayo, or that are not operating optimally, and we we know them. We grew up around here. You know, your Belmont, uh, Kami, which is, that, is, that is now the real Kami ruins, actually, because, uh, <laughs> you know, they need energy. And no one at, at any point said, you know what, your energy policy is skewed. This is what, you know, you, all this that thing that you're doing, uh, you know, you, 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 when uh, at the time people could just go to the Reserve Bank and grab money for shopping trips, first family. No one questioned that. 
that that is unlawful, it's irregular, it's corrupt. You know, it was just chef, chef, chef all the way. So I think uh, those are the lessons that for Zimbabwe, uh, uh, we, you know, going ahead, if this country is ever to come right, there has to be that culture of accountability uh, 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 where people know that there are consequences, regardless of who you are. I mean, I was in Korea at the invitation of the Anti-Corruption and Civil Rights Commission uh, sometime earlier, in, sometime in 2019. And they've got about two presidents in jail. <laughs> the immediate past one is in jail, you know? Um, I'm not suggesting that we start jailing presidents. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, it shows you that regardless of who you are, if you are unethical, if you do things that are, are wrong, there are consequences. So this country has experienced for a very long time a situation where people uh, you know, have all this unexplained wealth. You, know, you have people who have, uh, who have large stashes of cash in their home. Nothing happens to them. You know, they, nothing happens, and, and, and whereas, of course, part of what we have been trying to put the other, on the other side is an architecture where if there are those type of situations, there are things like asset forfeiture. Look, it's, 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 been, it's been struggling even in that space because there was a period where there was a state capture thing. Huh? When we wrote that preliminary report on state capture, it was because there was an observation that even there, there is a problem where people can capture the state. In other words, where people can di divert the state from its core function, which is to govern and govern efficiently. Where now Zenzel and Debele becomes the person who's telling the minister of, 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 of mines who to grant uh, mining licenses to, you see. And I think it, it, there have been allegations that those kind of things happen in this country and other countries. And that's wrong, that's corruption. Um, and, 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 and for me, that's, that, 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 that's a problem. I mean, I, in the past few days, have seen a lot, many examples of, of, of maladministration by the state, you know, where you see people lining up at home affairs offices overnight. Uh, and the following morning, they're, t they're turned away just for a, an ID. They're turned away and told that, you know what, there are only 30 spaces, you know, at hospitals. They're, told there are no medicines uh, or no doctors right here at uh, uh, UBH Hospital and Mpilo Hospital, which, by the way, used to be world-class facilities. Even today, the infrastructure is world-class. I mean, Zimbabwe is a very strange place in the sense that it was such a beautiful infrastructure that you don't see in a lot of African countries. But it's struggling. It's, people are living a life of poverty in, in a very beautiful uh, setup. It's very strange. So you talk about uh, a number of things, and one of the things that I want to mm. ask you about mm. is the, the interference, or political interference. Mm. You know, you're doing this job where you're basically bringing everyone to account. Mm. You're powerful. Mm. How do you then deal with the political interference? You know, I think the main issue is how you legislate this, these offices into place. The political will when you create them. I've seen that they want to create such things here, they're, they're talking about that. But interference is going, or attempted interference is going to happen. I mean, I can tell you that throughout my seven year term in South Africa, there were politicians who were very unhappy, who were, uh, who were very, uh, resistant to what the institution was doing but the law made it difficult for them to resist because it's there it's on it's in black and white it's in paper that says this these institutions in fact the constitution says these institutions are independent and shall operate without fear or favor or prejudice and no one may interfere with their with their with their work so it's 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 it's, it's, it's in terms of the law so the, 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 the trick there would be to say, when you create them, you, you are not just doing a, a, a decorative exercise. You are really putting all those things. And I'm not, you know, my, my experience is, is the fact that uh, even there in that space that we're working in, they are very, 
uh, they get annoyed. They, they, it's, it's a, I would say it's a thorn in the side of the, of, of the political, uh, uh, you know, they, some of them, you know, they, there will even be attempts to delegitimize some of us, even myself, you know, where people say, ah, this one, you know, but, but, but because the law protected you, even removal from office, you put it in the law to say, hey, you know, these people, you can only remove them with two thirds majority in parliament. So it becomes difficult, even when they're doing things that you don't like, they are protected by the law from, you can only remove them literally through an impeachment process, which is where, whereas I know a lot of the current setups, not just in Zimbabwe, but a lot of countries where people in these roles sometimes can be fired at a whim. When someone doesn't like what you are doing, you're out. Uh, and, 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 and that's not indep independence. Like, for example, there are these, I mean, I, I worked also in, in, in strengthening independence of the judiciary in South Africa, creation of the Office of the Chief Justice before I, I, I did what I was doing. And, and of course, part of what is, is sacrosanct there is the issue of those bungalow principles of independence of the judiciary, you know, institutional independence, uh, 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 financial independence security of tenure. Those principles apply with equal force to all these institutions. That, for example, you, you don't create the institution and you don't give it money so that, that it can't work. Or you can just fire the person at any time. So interference, it, it actually goes down. In fact, you actually sort of like neutralize the possibility of in, in interference if you put those checks and balances in place that ensure that these institutions are actually taken seriously. So a lot of people, tend to make fun of a lot of these institutions in Zimbabwe because they feel that the institutions are just decorations. And You're talking about making fun of the institutions. <laughs> and one of the, the, the institutions that people have always said ah, they won't do anything is the anti-corruption commission. Mm -hmm. uh, where people are saying, we have an anti-corruption mm -hmm. commission. Uh, they will mm -hmm. tell you we have mm -hmm. 160 people mm -hmm. that uh, we are you know, looking at. But you don't actually see the actual results of you know happen. Is it mm -hmm. uh, because it's not functioning properly? Uh, is it uh, interference? How can such institutions be, you know, mm. made sure that they equipped to actually perform? Well, like, uh, my, my point earlier on was also, you know, the political will, where you, where you, first of all, legislate their independence and you ensure that you, you resource them. And, and literally, the, you know, that they're not just a, a tick box exercise where you're just having an anti-corruption commission for the sake of it. You really have to give them the powers. They have to be, 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 be capacitated. So, 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 I mean, I don't want to uh, be a prophet of doom. Uh, what I've seen uh, about the, 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 the anti-corruption commission locally is that, in fact, it's been saying the right things, a lot of the right things. Whether it will walk the course <laughs> is another thing. So, 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 I don't want to be this person who says, oh, they say, I know he, he was just negative. No, I'm not going, I'm going to say, okay, let me give him the benefit of the doubt. And say, you guys are saying, you know, you've got hundred and something people that you are, uh, you know, in your, uh, uh, in, on your radar and you, and you, and you feel that, uh, and of course, uh, I saw that the other point that they made there, which is something that we had a challenge with. They are saying that the NPA, uh, the National Prosecuting Authority uh, also needs to do its part. In other words, for example, if you have, uh, you know, a docket or, or information about corruption by X or Y, that that person still has to be prosecuted effectively and successfully. So it, 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 it's a combination of, 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 of the fact that you, you, all these institutions have to work together effectively. So if you have a very strong... Zimbabwe Anti-Corruption Commission and a terrible prosecution, prosecution service, you might just as well forget because nothing is going to happen when, these, <laughs> when they get this information. They are just going to sleep on it. And again, a very important uh, factor, which, some, which happened in the, in the South African setup, avoid politicizing the appointments of the heads of those people, of, of those institutions. It's very important. 
that the people who lead those institutions, and I'm not, I'm not questioning any uh, body's bona fides, but for example, the National Prosecuting Authority, you can't have someone who is a, a card-carrying member of uh, the, the, the ruling party or the card-carrying member of the main opposition party. It, it, it cuts both ways. Because, <laughs> see, let's say it's, it's an MTC uh, activist who is the head of prosecution. They will go after the, <laughs> the, 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 the opponents. Likewise, if it's someone, let's say, who is ZANU-PF. So you need someone who's, who's somewhat uh, neutral in their thinking, someone who is objective uh, and, and a professional. And you don't interfere with how they do their work. You don't intimidate them. You, you let them do their work. So we, to, to some extent, some degree, we were fortunate that we were able to do that, partly because the law protected us. Even when uh, you know, people were th making threats and whatever. I mean, I, I completed my term and everybody knows I'm, I'm, I'm born and bred in Bulawayo, Zimbabwe. I'm a naturalized South African citizen. The law protected me. Now, you know, no one could touch me. And I say it because I've completed, I'm here, I'm, I've finished it. So, 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 so th those kind of uh, dynamics need to be put in place. That, 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 that protect these institutions from undue interference, undue political and, 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 and other interference. I mean, the economic climate is very harsh and breeds opportunities for corruption. Uh, but again, this is the opportunity for this country to, to move ahead. I mean, we've really gone down, hit rock bottom, you know, in terms of... But we still, we're not, we're still better off than what Rwanda was 25 years ago when everybody was butchered left, right and center. And they have been able to resuscitate that from zero. This country, which has beautiful things like this, uh, it's, it's actually, as I said, it's, it's such a, a contradiction in terms that this country is said to be a, now a, 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 a poor country. But then, of course, I think for me, the big elephant in the room is also the rule of law, respect for the rule of law. For a very long time, Zimbabwe has not respected the rule of law. Uh, you know, there were courts for the sake of courts. I mean, when Chief Justice Gabe and the last crew in 2001 were removed, you, were now, you now had these people who were thrown in who were just given farms. <laughs> and uh, they were the most pliable, partisan people on the bench you could find. Um, and that's not how these things are supposed to be. The rule of law, or lack of it, cost this country's economy. Because remember, when, 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 when you do business in a country, when you get into a contract with somebody, you, you want to know that there's sanctity of contract. That if someone owes you money, you can take them to a court. Or you can get your money back through some, you know. So if, there, if there's no respect of, or respect of property rights, you know, where, for example, if, you, if your property, you buy a property today, you don't expect to borrow someone to say, hey, this is no longer yours. That's, that's, a, that's a society where the rule of law does not exist. The indigenization policy, as, it was well-meaning. Obviously, uh, you know, the history of, of, of the Rhodesian setup was very unjust. And, uh, and I, uh, one, I'm one person who's firmly opposed to colonialism. But the way we try to re rectify that here was such a disaster. We tried, we did the whole smash and grab approach where you just get into someone's thing and you just say, uh, this is mine. Or you, you are saying, come and invest in my country, 51% is mine, right? And you had people, for example, I mean, if I take this particular city that, uh, of, of Bulawayo, uh, which was the industrial hub of, 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 of the country, it was called um, the Liverpool of, 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 during the Rhodesian days, I think it was called the Liverpool of Rhodesia or something like that. 
with all these wonderful factories and industries uh, Kami, in Kami Road and uh, uh, um, uh, all over the place. Now, all that worked because people knew that, uh, you know, the proceeds from there were commercially viable for them. Now, then you get people just wanting to be greedy, <laughs> taking these things, GND, what happened to GND, uh, and so forth. Uh, they take these things, they want them, they don't know what they're going to do with them. Today, they are empty locked shells. They're just chains. If you go around a lot of the, the industries, it's, it, it's such a shame, you know? It's just locked up and nothing is happening. And as I'm saying, it's a rule of law situation that allowed that to happen. Because in a place where the rule of law is taken seriously, you don't just walk into someone's house and take their things or into someone's uh, no matter how aggrieved you may be, you, 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 it's not done like that. And economic, South Africa, for example, I'll, I'll tell you, South Africa still has many of those same inequality challenges that uh, Zimbabwe is grappling with post-independence or during Rhodesia. You know, it's very unequal. I mean, uh, the, the, the economy is still uh, mostly in, in the hands of white capital. But you cannot say that we're going to go tomorrow and smash and grab and say the mines are ours, uh, the farms are ours, everything. It will just collapse, just like this place collapsed when that happened. So I, I hope that they are learning because I see a lot of rhetoric for people who get excited, who don't really, some many who have never even been to Zimbabwe, who haven't seen the before and after of, 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 of what happened. So the, the, the point for me is that these institutions are such a, a, a magnificent way of ensuring that the state just never gets carried away, you know. You, mm. you, you have a lot of boy, boy, grown in Burawa, you know, and you, you find yourself in the uh, mm. in this powerful institution. How do you rise up to, to that level? Well, look, I, 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 I grew up in a in a very uh, draconian home if I can put it I'm putting it nicely where <laughs> education was supposed to be taken seriously you know and uh, you, you 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 swim wherever you, you are you know whatever waters you are in you 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 you, you swim and of course uh, this was li literally just uh, an act of fate in the sense that obviously one if one couldn't ply their chosen trade optimally in their place of birth you 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 try your hand elsewhere so i mean and of course i think the to be fair to the south african setup it has done very well in terms of building this, this counter, culture of accountability like i said there's a lot of hostility there's a lot of friction uh, i you know, I would see some nonsense. Some people say, go back to Zimbabwe, what, what? <laughs> you know, because I'm a citizen <laughs> legally, you know what I mean? And I'm an African. <laughs> Anyone can tell me that I'm a foreigner in Africa, you know? So, 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 so at the end of the day, um, but it's sad that as well, that the implosion of this economy has made... Uh, Zimbabwean citizens, citizens, pariahs and things like that in all over, in, in other places. Uh, and some of us, one can say we've been, I won't say fortunate, we've been, we've had a much more, ten, much more tenacity and been able to, to, to say, you know what, regardless of whatever you say, we are still going to do what we need to do. Your father was a politician, yes. I mean, a very powerful politician. Yes. I mean, you grew up in a family that was really political mm -hmm. in a way. Mm -hmm. How does that shape your upbringing? Oh, yeah, it's an integral part of who I am. Um, uh, and part of it, you know, and I, I, I try and avoid being this person who is forever beholden to being called so and so son. Because that's not what he wanted for us. He wanted us to, to go out and be, uh, you know, to make it uh, and continue his legacy in, 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 in our own right. But that said, I think he was a very great mentor. <laughs> like, <laughs> to the point of <laughs> uh, uh, draconian, you know, where, you know, 
things things had to be done in a certain way and uh, and i think i can safely say with uh, myself and certainly probably all of my family i think people are, are, are have kept those principles and i think uh, um it, it, it's a we're a product of good parenting <laughs> you know uh we saw injustice at a very early age the kukurahundi issue was a period when we were children and we saw it with our own eyes not with our own eyes people being killed but you know you know that your father has vanished for some days or weeks uh and and, and so forth uh because there's there are challenges happening in the country and they were then locked up uh, until before the unity accord you go to prison but even then let's say when i was born he was in wawa prison in guero all right so you know from very early age that uh, this is uh, there's a struggle going on <laughs> why is uba wearing those khaki uh, <laughs> uh, uniform from prison you know even from when other people's fathers are going to work you know that your father is wearing a khaki uniform at wawa prison uh, and and it's so sad because those people fought you know they fought with passion for this country and not just this country you know, they assisted even the the, the the, the, across the ANC, Wanki campaign, not, not necessarily him, you know, you've spoken to all the other uh, luminaries in the struggle. Um, and they fought so hard for people to attain political and economic freedom. But now what we have is this chaos. Uh, it, it's painful for, for, for me and I think for a lot of people because especially in this country where there was a very bitter bush war you know we used to say you know it, it, it was it was it was it was it it was it was big you know you, you you can go to youtube you'll see all those videos of people uh dying and being thrown into mass graves you know in this in 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 the 70s um and for people to 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 fight with such passion um and principle and then you have uh, nothing to show for it at the end of the day you know potholes and uh, uh, schools that are overgrown with grass and uh, falling apart i mean this is the 40th year and i and i i i, I would be so furious with rage if someone tells me about 40 years of progress <laughs> because it's been 40 years of regression, 40 years of destruction. And I think they all need to understand that this is time for them to, to fix some of these things. Uh, it, it, it's very painful to be, I, I'm, I'm not gonna to lie to you, that uh, uh, when you think about the sacrifice, not just my own father, but a lot of people at the time, some paid with the ultimate price, they died, you know, uh, uh, very young, before they had even, fam even had families or whatever, fighting for this. Uh, country but they've got nothing there's nothing to show for it in terms of we we, we really uh, you know what is there to show for it is long lines of fuel uh, uh, you know what is there to show for it is uh, is, is, is pain uh, you know hospitals uh, uh, you know brown water in Harare you know they'd now drink brown tap or they can't even drink their water they, they, so 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 and it also feeds sadly into a very sad narrative that black people can't run countries and which I am mean, I'm, I'm, I'm one of those people who don't believe that uh, we just need to uh, we need to be very firm in the, with ethical principles because they, I mean look at Kagame it's not true I mean, okay, he needs to at some point get a successor, but they are actually <laughs> a nation that is is doing well, you know? You've just completed your seven years mm. um, as a deputy public okay. What's next? I like to say that uh, uh, the fight goes on, you know? Um, I, I, I will be probably less constrained by 
a national jurisdiction. I'll probably be more international and in, in, in my work. Uh, I, I certainly would like to contribute also quite a lot to the country of my birth. Um, um, I, 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 because, you know, we can't allow it to, to, uh, to continue to disintegrate. But sadly, the only way we can contribute to this country as well is if the atmosphere and the environment is conducive. You know, in the past, people here, Zimbabwe's got a culture of assassinations, you know? My own father was assassinated. It wasn't a black dog, you know, for principle. So the atmosphere needs to make it conducive for people to assist. There are so many people, even from the diaspora, who are, you know, can contribute to, to, uh, to progress. You know, uh, the sad thing also about the fact that, you know, this particular group of diasporans is not the most united. They are always fighting and uh, out blogging each other and out twittering each other. You know, uh, you know. Look at you look at the Greeks and the Jews, uh, the, the the Ethiopian diaspora, and all those people wherever they are. They are always lifting each other up. None of this tribalism nonsense and all this thing. You know, we. So so so. My hope in the future is that one can actually assist this country and others, you know, to, 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 to push these principles and, and, and make them uh, living documents where people actually are... Uh, uh, because certainly, as I've said, <laughs> you know, where there is no rule of law, there is no economy. Uh, there are very few places where you, do, you have no respect for the rule of law and no respect for for people's rights and people's uh, where you can still make progress, you know? I mean, you are a journalist. Think of the countries where journalists are ill-treated. And think, of about, think about those countries, how, how those countries are. I mean, part of the, this country's main problem is also ill-treatment of journalists, where people are being locked up and, and beaten and so forth. I mean, that's, if, if, if you are governing properly, you have nothing to be afraid of. Your father was a disciplinarian. He was mm. outspoken mm. In, in many ways. Mm. I mean, at home, how was he like growing up with your father? <laughs> I, I have lots of siblings who you can also uh, check with, but I think um, my own uh, experience, uh, our experience, is that you had a, 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 a very loving disciplinarian, you know, uh, who who, who was very big on education, um, which is why I think we have generally done well in that, in that space, in spite of um, the fact that you know, he passed on many years ago. And, and, and of course, raised us to be very humble. Uh, to know all type of lifestyles, you know. Um, one moment you'd go and visit uh, the, maternal, the, the paternal grandmother in the rural areas and you would know how to, uh, 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 you know, plow the fields and milk the cows, even though you then go to a, 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 a school then when post Zimbabwe, all the government schools were, were quite good. Uh, you, you'd learn all the different lifestyles, but at, at home, it was discipline, discipline, discipline throughout. You had to do your chores inside, outside, you know. Uh, you he hated the idea of you sitting around idling doing nothing <laughs> so sometimes we'd even pretend to be doing something when we're not doing anything <laughs> so, so 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 yeah it's it's it, 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 it's that kind of environment where and of course ensuring that you know your your your, your culture you know there was that period where a lot of people only 
taught their children English, you know. For that, uh, English uh, stopped at the gate. But of course, when he was upset, his English would come out. <laughs> so, yeah, so, so, so the, 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 there was a, a very fond memories of, 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 of that upbringing. Um, but of course, uh, and of course, politics was not put into the home space that much. You know, you, you know someone is a father through and through. So this is the person who gives you pocket money. This is the person, in fact, uh, this is the person who ensures that you, you're, you've got your uniforms. This is the person. Uh, but of course, you, 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 you knew what was happening. But it wasn't so much of a major discussion in the home. How did his passing away affect you as a, as a person? Look, look uh, at the time, personally, I was, at, I was in, uh, uh, I just started uh, my study in Swaziland, and I think, uh, uh, and I would say his passing was a beginning, uh, in many ways, of the descent, uh, decline of this particular country, because those are the voices of people who, you, who would challenge all the nonsense, all the BS, as, as we say, you know, that was going on, and, 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 and uh, those are some of the voices that were silenced, uh, and, and we could see that, uh, you know, uh, there was a decline. Um, so it, it affected one, especially for, for a very long time in terms of the amount of loyalty to one's country because then you had to go and study here and there and do this and that. Whereas previously, a lot of people did things here at home, right? <laughs> they were not, people never felt that there was a need to go anywhere. So, um, yeah, so it, 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 it is a painful uh, experience, as I said, because people who fought for a country to be killed like animals, is, 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 is something else and of course and I hope that that culture of assassinations uh, can end because you know there are countries where people differ politically and they can be robust and everything but they don't kill each other you know uh, just because you, you, you disagree with the other person uh, uh, and that's part of where this discussion about accountability needs to grow in the sense that if, if, if someone doesn't like what Zenzel and Debele has reported on in a documentary, it doesn't mean that we should silence him, you know. Uh, the most robust democracies are built on differences of opinion. If you have a message to, to Zimbabwe, what would you say? My, 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 my message to Zimbabweans is that they need to be courageous uh, and also have this tenacity to face the challenges that have faced this country for so long because uh, it is a beautiful country which is presently a shadow of its former self. And, 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 and that can't continue. Um, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm convinced that this can be turned around. Um, I totally understand why people have, were not as outspoken or vocal, because it is a police state, you get killed. Where is that Zamara young man? You know? Because of his, 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 his outspoken. So I totally understand that people are caught between that very difficult space where it's not the most welcoming country for divergent opinions. But I think there's greatness in numbers and I would say, and also to, to this current government, uh, you know, uh, I would say, Amunyari, Alilanhloni, Nalibona Mopotos and all this, you know, overgrown grass, things that you inherited in one piece. You can't blame that on sanctions, you know? So there are things that we have to fix ourselves. And, 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 and it's important that uh, this country 
uh, would be brought back to its former glory. And one of the important things that Malunga is saying is that for Zimbabwe to move forward, there has to be a culture of accountability. And I think I agree with him 100% that the problem that we have in Zimbabwe is accountability. You know, we can talk about uh, the Anti-Corruption Commission, we can talk about uh, reforms, we can talk about uh, everything. One thing that is a fact is that Zimbabwe has good laws, has good policies, has good constitution, has so many constitution, I mean, commissions that were put in place to make people account. But the end of the day what we don't have is accountability there is no one who has been sent to jail because they are corrupt there is no one who has lost their job because they are corrupt there is no minister who has lost his job or, or been sent to jail because he did not account for public funds and this is the problem that we have in zimbabwe i hope this year or in the next coming years we will have this culture of accountability and for people to be accountable for government officials to be accountable it is the citizens that need to stand up and say hey where is our money what did you promise and have you delivered as long as the people don't demand accountability don't put these people under pressure don't ask those who are in government offices to account for their actions we will still complain and complain forever so in 2020, I encourage you to take action, stand up for your right, go to a government official, ask them what they've done with your money, ask them what they happened to their promises. I mean, they're always promising, but less is delivered. My name is Zenzel Ndebele, and this was The Breakfast Club. Till you meet again tomorrow, have a good day.